Hey folks, I'm Aslin Law. Welcome to season three. I'm so excited. Season three of Savor the Flavor. It was a long old break, but now we're back. Mirez found her okra and we're finally live. Before we head on to the kitchen with Chef Mireille, let's go say hello to our guest panelists. We shall start with just two hours down the road from me and say hello to Sally. Hi everyone, thank you for asking me to come in um, Aslin, it's, it's lovely to be here. Um, uh, as you all know me, uh, Cook with Sally, I have a blog, uh, um, www.cookwithsally.com and um, I haven't been on it for a little bit because I had, I had to look after a baby, but I am back on it from tomorrow. Uh, okay, let's clarify that, not your baby, right? No, my baby, my nephew, daughter, she's adorable. Cool. But I looked after her for two weeks, but now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, and it's good to have you back. Lovely flower, love it. Carna carnation, is it? Is it a carnation? No. What's my flower? flower? Yes, 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 carnation. It is. Okay, cool. Right, let's head on over to France. Somebody's in her garden, and she's letting us know about it. There you go. Ta da! <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm in my garden. Yes, it, it has been, we had a heat wave. It's been 35 degrees and I just can't sit inside. So I'm outside in the garden trying to get cool. Um, I, have a, I have a blog to Italian Kiwi and I'm just here to watch Marie cook. Cool. Excellent. And you've just, you've just said goodbye to some guests, haven't you? Oh yes, I saw Yasmina jo and Jeremy are two Google Plus they guys. They came all the way from Croatia to see me. Good. Croatian guests. Right, we are going to head on over to Chef Mire. Hi Mire, tell us a little about yourself very quickly first before we. Hi start. everyone, I'm Mire. I'm the Schizo Chef Online, and I'm here. I have a blog, the SchizoChef.com, and I'm here today to prepare for you a Caribbean specialty. Cool. I am so excited because although so, I've heard of it, I don't know what it is. So <laughs> okay, let <laughs> me get started. So right now. In this pot, I had okra that was boiling in two cups of water for until they're soft. So it's been boiling now for about 10 minutes. Mm. So now I make a paste here, which is a combination. Let me make sure you can see it. Yeah, just, yeah, mm -hmm. no worries. Which is a combination of cornmeal and water. And the reason we do this before adding the cornmeal directly is that cornmeal has a tendency to clump up if you add it right away to hot liquid. So by forming this paste, it's not going to clump and it's going to have a nice smooth texture. So I'm just going to pour it in and I'm going to just stir it constantly um, for it to simmer and thicken. So the reason why I call this Caribbean polenta is that it's basically the same thing, but where the Italian version uses what, um, butter and cheese to make it stick together and to form that texture, we use the gelatinous texture from okra, and that's what's going to make it stick together. Okay. A lot of people don't like okra. They say it's slimy. They say all sorts of, <laughs> all sorts of negative things upon, upon my beloved okra. But I love okra. I mean, it's one of those things I grew up eating. It's eaten a lot in the Caribbean. And I like it whether it's in a gumbo or fritter or something like this. I love okra in any form. Mm, mm. I, 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 love, I love okra too. If I can just answer a, a comment, maybe the audience. Uh, Morris Thompson is asking if we're live. He's having problems with the video. We, we've got some technical issues. It's not us. It's HOA gremlins. There's always a gremlin or two hanging about to make my life <laughs> difficult. So there you go. We are live. At least I think we are. Right. Back to the kitchen. So, yeah. So now when it's just going to simmer for about five to ten minutes, so just, um, I guess, to give you a little bit of background on it, this really came from Africa. Most African countries have some form of it, and in the Caribbean, we call it kuku. Kuku? <laughs> okay. Say that again. We call it kuku. 
cuckoo, okay? Yes. Cuckoo. But it depends on what island you're on. Like in the British islands, places like Barbados and uh, Trinidad, places that were formerly British, they call it cuckoo. A lot of the other islands that were either French or Dutch, we call it unji. So it really depends what island you're on. Like my mother is from Aruba, and there we call it Fungi. But it's the but same it's the thing. thing. It's the same exact thing, yeah. I don't know why, what caused its different names. Um, it's just, yeah, the nature of the, the Caribbean. But Barbados is really where it's most popular because it's part of the national dish. The national dish is pupu and flying fish. So flying fish is a type of fish that's really native to Barbados. Okay. And, uh, yes? Okay. So, um, cuckoo is, is it, is it a, a, like a pudding? It's, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we call it porridge. It's a savory porridge because that's another thing. We love porridge. <laughs> um, um, so cornmeal is used a lot. Like we also make breakfast porridge from cornmeal. Just like you would make oatmeal or cream of wheat, we make it from cornmeal. And does so it become this, sweet? You make it sweet for breakfast or something? Yes, yes. So um, the breakfast version of cornmeal porridge is um, first we simmer evaporated milk with spices, usually cinnamon and star anise. Then we add the uh, cornmeal with brown sugar usually, and it's cooked until the cornmeal cooks into a, into a uh, porridge, and then it's usually topped with ground cinnamon and nutmeg. Okay. Mm. It's, it's good. Good. Got a question. Okay. So just to show you, it's pretty much ready at this point. Let me just show you real quick. Okay. Just a minute. Sorry. What's the ratio of cornmeal to water? Okay. So I added, I started with two cups of water, and then it was one um, that the okra boiled in. Then it was one cup of uh, okra. I mean cornmeal to one cup of water, and now I just added at the end another half a cup. Because as you cook, it gets thicker and thicker, so that other additional half cup of water at the end is just so it's not too thick. And the full recipe is on the event. Um, yeah. So you see how it's starting to see if we can get it there. Can you see it? It's kind of gooey now. You see that gooey texture? Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's how it forms. Sally, are you familiar with this? No, no, I'm fascinated, but you know me, I like my spice. I was going to ask you, can you make it spicy? I mean, I like. I, I suppose you can, but it's usually, this is really seen as a side dish. Think of it as rice. So therefore, it's plain. Actually, what I did to present it, I actually have some Caribbean-style stew fish simmering on the back burner right here. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to show it to you how we would plate it. And that and really, fish is the most common accompaniment with it, either fried or stewed. And so that's what I made for you, the stew fish. Oh, so yeah, I'm actually going to get ready to plate it right now. Okay, so the way we played it is we, hold on, give me one second, I just, I, I just have a ramekin right here, or you could use a small bowl, I'm just spraying a little bit with some nonstick spray so it doesn't stick, and we just spoon it in, Why? and you see how gooey that is? Mm. Doesn't it set when it gets cooler, it's like glue, it's not and then basically, once you have that, we unmold it onto a plate. Oh. So it's very pretty. And then let me switch around the pots for you here so yeah. you can yeah. see what the stew fish looks like. So this is my stew fish. So here, so this is where we have the spicy food element. Can you see it? Yes. Ah. Lovely. Okay. Lovely. So and all ah. 
So this was some Caribbean stewed fish. So it's basically stewed with onion, uh, bell pepper, tomatoes, parsley, and mm -hmm. scotch bonnet pepper, which is the pepper we mostly use. If you can't find scotch what? bonnet, you can Mira. use a habanero. Mira, you know what you could do? Move your fish to your left. Uh, okay, I'll okay, that's okay. mine. You're stretching out. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Ah, ah, nice. Okay, okay. Thanks, Sally. So, so, the recipe for me to use fish is on your blog. Yes, I can send out the link after. Okay, cool. Excellent. I have a comment here. From Cuckoo and we also is absolutely fabulous, especially if you are out on a boat with a great tropical drink. Very much. <laughs> yes. We also, just to finish it for you, also usually top it with a little bit of mut of butter, and then the heat from the cuckoo will melt the butter, and it'll just melt into it that makes it a little bit more rich. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. Hold the plate. Take the plate back. Just have one trick for a minute so we can have a look at it and think about it. S Lisa, anyway. I keep getting okay. there. Any comments, Any thoughts? No. Sorry, it's very echoey. It looks fantastic. It's very similar to the Okay. We are having some echo issues. So what I'm going to do is, Ray, could you tell us about the flying fish a little bit more about the recipe? Okay, so it's a very simple uh, recipe. You basically saute onion and bell pepper. Um, we use a seasoning to season the fish, though. It's called green seasoning. This is the bottle. And you can get it in Caribbean markets. I think they have Caribbean markets in London. <laughs> what's, what's, yeah. what, what's, what, what are the ingredients for the green seasoning? So it's basically... It's called green seasoning, a bunch of green things, things like parsley, cilantro, scallion, onion, garlic, ginger, and it's all mixed together with some, some, some lime juice. And it's basically kind of like the Caribbean all-purpose marinade. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, so I suppose one could even make that at home then with a whole lot of you know, with a whole lot of stuff as you mentioned and some lime juice and vinegar perhaps. Yes. This is what it looks like. Excellent. Okay. Alrighty. So is cuckoo served for is it made for occasion? No, it's not really linked to an occasion. Mm. Um, most people in the Caribbean, at least and the way I grew up, Sunday is pretty much when you have fish. It's kind of um, the Sunday, think of it as the equivalent of the Sunday pot roast dinner. Mm. You know, fried fish is really a very typical Sunday dinner, and this is a accompaniment. So this would basically be like a basic Sunday evening dinner. Okay, okay. that's really that's good. Really good. Sally, any thoughts? I'm, I'm so this is such a beautiful dish. And, and have you had anything like a flying fish before? Me? Me. Mm. Oh. No, but it's, uh, is it similar to polenta? Oh, that's a Yes, I mean, it, uh, that's a come, I call it the Caribbean polenta. <laughs> Well, it is, yes. I like polenta. I like it cold and then you fry it. That's nice. Really? Yes, because polenta, I, I make it flat, a bit thicker than you. Just when it's cold, you can fry it. You can make a really nice dish with it. But yes. with it's quite cool. Okay. What we're going to do is because we are having some echo issues, we'll just go through some audience comments. You've got Brittany. I'm going to say, I'm very to say, say hi to everyone. We've got Cheta, Namal, Matthias, Alina Bellamet, Maurice Thompson, Carmen Mandy, Ibrani Slim. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching us. And, um, Spirit, 
any last words about how to cook and go and any tips about how to make it? You know, uh, just the most important thing is while it's simmering to constantly stir. Because if you don't stir it constantly, it's going to get lumpy and not have the nice, smooth, and luxurious texture. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, T. Great. Great. So, so we're going to get up at least to say quick goodbye. Lisa. Lisa. Oh, sorry. I can't hear very well. Uh, goodbye, everybody. It was very interesting to see that the equivalent of polenta is, so it sounds like a really good dish. It does. Uh, Sally. Thank you very much, uh, Murray. And I would like to see another Caribbean dish. I have I know nothing about Caribbean uh, food. So that's very interesting. Thank you for having me, Aslin, and my flowers. I love that. We'll get Maria to pick us out. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching us. Um, season 3 came back with an echo. We shall see you again in the next episode. We'll get Maria to say goodbye for us. Maria, thank you so much for cooking, and we'll have you cooking again, won't we? Another Caribbean dish. Okay, thank you, everyone, and thank you for being patient with our technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you soon.